Hey, Racer fans, it's the last road game of the season for the Murray State Racers. The Racer Report with Chris Hatcher begins right now. Hi everybody and welcome to the Racer Report. Dave Winder here with head coach Chris Hatcher. And this week is the final game of the season for the Racers. It's senior day at Stewart Stadium at one o'clock on Saturday as the Racers say goodbye to a very great group of seniors that they've had. It'll be kind of a bittersweet day for the Racers. They'll get to play at home, but it will be the last home game for those seniors that are outgoing. Well, welcome to the Racer Report with head coach uh, Chris Hatcher. Uh, wish we had better news for you, but it was a 55-24 defeat at Eastern Kentucky Saturday. And coach, up until about the 10 minute mark of the second half, the racers were right in the ball game, had a lead, and were rolling along. What happened from that point forward? Well, first of all, Dave, the, the score is um, very indicative of, of the outcome of the game. You know, sometimes you get a big score and it gets away at the end. Um, you know, their X's and their O's were a lot better than our X's and O's. And it, it was a um, it was the, in the trenches is where it came up most noticeably um, after watching the film. You know, we played great offensively, defensively. We couldn't get a stop early on. And, and we talked last week about, you know, there being a little non-belief that we can go to Richmond and win. And, you know, you look at the record, you know, Eastern Kentucky has dominated Murray State over the years. And then when we got down 10 points there, it, was, it just seemed like that all the wind in our sails it was, was gone, that I don't think we thought we could win at that point. And that was disappointing. Um, but again, after watching the film, um, they just manhandled us and they beat us at the point of the attack and um, that was very disappointing. Well, we're going to go ahead and roll the highlights here and uh, take a look at the first half from Roy Kidd Stadium. First of all, uh, as we tape our show today on Sunday, it's Veterans Day and EKU had a, a nice thing. A couple of soldiers from Fort Campbell flew in the game ball and that was really, really neat. And Coach, uh, it was a great day for football. I mean, it was about 65 degrees. It was sunny. A little windy. You guys were into the wind in the first uh, quarter. Yeah, the wind was really tough. And here's a, a big catch um, by Jamal Berry for about 15 yards to, to pick up a first down. This is the opening drive. And, boy, we look crisp. We look sharp. Um, great throw on the curl route to Walter Powell, who had another big day. Um, you can see the first half, he really lit it up. And then third and goal, we're trying to throw a hitch and go out wide, but it was covered, so we come to Javante Trotter. Man, things are going great. We're up seven to nothing and made it look real easy, Dave. Yeah, it, it really looked easy. Offensively, the racers were taking it right down the field, but as we're going to see, so was Eastern Kentucky. And the racers, uh, I think, uh, on well, the, the Colonels on third down in the first half were nine for nine. And there were many times where you had them in third and long, but just couldn't get that, that third down stop. No, we couldn't get off the field. I think they were 14 to 16 overall on the night. And here, the, that first play from scrimmage was very indicative of what took place throughout the course of the game. Um, there's a third down conversion. Um, they throw the out cut. Um, they come down again, um, hit, a, hit a little route here. And, you know, this was kind of the way it worked for our defense. We force a fumble. They recover it, get the first down. Um, and, and boy, they just ran it right at us. And here they got us on a little wing T play. We're out of position. And Denham, who had a tremendous day, 225 yards rushing, he takes it in to knock the score up at 7-7. Seven to seven. Well, uh, we were commenting on Racer TV on Saturday. Uh, we've been watching uh, T.J. Pryor and Matt Denman for three three years, and I, I won't miss them next year when the race is No goes. doubt. What, and, what talent. And, yeah, Pryor's such a good player. And, and here's a great play, great catch by Walter Powell on Look the screen. Look at that burst and he hits the seam. I mean, the, the run was great. The catch, though, was phenomenal. And all of a sudden, you know, we're, hey, 14 to seven. And by the way, that's the first time we've used that combination of, of colors on the uniform. And I thought it looked really good. I thought it turned out nice. I thought it looked nice. Uh, uh, John Brush mentioned that to me. You know, we were talking about that on Racer, Racer TV as well. The EKU comes right back. This was a, a first and 10 play. 
uh, Adrian Dinkins there. We, we, get, the, a we really get the good sack. Game. We get the sack. And one thing about Dinkins too, he got he got uh, his shoulder got messed up, and he came back to play though. Yeah, yeah, he 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 played hard. Um, but again, you know, they're getting some big yards. There's Brandon Hathaway on the tackle. But the problem is, everything was happening downfield. Um, here comes Denham again, um, another big run. Um, you know, we got the stop there. And, um, and then this was a big play. This was third and goal, and I thought that was great coverage. Um, it was perhaps, in my book, one of the worst <laughs> interference calls I've seen. It, yeah, I mean, it was I great just coverage, what, what was wrong with it. And then they end up getting first and goal from the two and score. But, you know, that could have been a big turn of events because they would have been settled for a field goal. Um, so it's 14-all. Well, we come right back. What a run by Jamal Berry. Um, the first half, our offensive line was playing outstanding. Casey was sharp. Um, here's a, a second down throw to Dontell Watkins, who picks up the first down. And then the quarter turns, and then it seemed like when we started going with the win, things got bad. Um, we end up having a third and five. We throw it out to Morrow. He drops it. Sure, first down. We settle for a field goal, go up 17-14. Well, I know every time EKU gets the ball here, it kind of looks like a broken record. But uh, th that being said, Pryor made a couple of great throws, and then there was the one catch over the middle, which I think it was on this drive here. Yeah, well, they, they did a good the job drive, of scheming. There was a one-handed catch. Dave, um, there we, we brought the all-out blitz, something we, we've been doing. The back released inside, and our, our guy couldn't get to him. We got picked, and um, very good call by them. But we forced them to miss the extra point, so it's only a 2017 game, and we're right back in it. So it's 20 to 17. The ratios go back to work from their own 29. Here's and Navarre Navarre Griffin. Griffin makes a, a big play there, 28 yards. Yeah, he had three big catches on the night. Really played well, and I'm, I'm proud of Navarre. He blocked well, probably his most complete game of the season. Here he does a good job of recognizing the blitz, breaks his route off. Casey's able to hit him. We come down right here. Um, Casey scrambles around, hits Walter Powell in another big burst. And um, golly, 24-20 um, racers. Um, and this is um, pretty much – the last good highlight of the game. Well, for us. I was going to say, if somebody would have told me that was the last points the racers are going to get on Saturday, I would have laughed. I mean, I wouldn't have believed it. There's no, no and, and you know, here we get them in a third down play. There was the catch I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, one handed catch over the middle. We showed the blitz, bailed out. Um, a heck of a it, catch. Oh, it was <laughs> a great play by them. And then, you know, all of a sudden we miss a few tackles here. That's um, very disappointing. Then it makes a big run. So now it's 27 24. And, um, and you could just feel the energy of our team being sucked out of them at this point. Well, you know, you're on the road. Uh, EKU is, uh, you know, they're an experienced program. And really, uh, you know, what Dean Hood's been able to do a after uh, Danny Hope did, uh, taking over for Roy Kidd, they just kind of kept it going over there. They haven't skipped a beat. No, and they got great tradition. You know, they're probably the most decorated team right. in the conference. Well, not probably, they are. I imagine them in Eastern Illinois. Um, but we come up a little short here, and we, we, um, we go with the quick kick. So we pin them down there on the 20-yard line. Um, you know, again, we're only down three at this, at this point of, of the ball game, getting towards the end of the half. But, boy, they were just getting big chunks on first down. And, um, I mean, they were doing a good job. They were mashing us. Here we catch them. Um, you know, they get a reverse on us. Um, but we, we do a nice job. There's Josh Manning um, forcing out and um, Corey Addison on the tackle. But we get them in third and long. Um, they run the reverse pass. We got good coverage. They just make the play over the top of us um, to go up by 10. And, again, third down was our Achilles heel there in the first half. Yeah, it was tough. So now the racers have got 110 to work with here in the first half and uh, really couldn't get much going here. They did have the, the play for Morrow to get it out, but, but then had to – had to punt it here right before the half. Well, we, we got caught we with an illegal block below the waist that I was not real happy about. So we're down 10, um, and, and I just didn't feel real good about our team at this point. You know, we just boy, just seemed like we were already whooped. But second half, early on, we came out. We fought a little better than I thought we would. It just was not our day. Okay, so we're going to take a break here, come back with the second half next on the Racer Report.
like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Racer Report with Head Coach Chris Hatcher. We're going to roll the second half highlights from Roy Kidd Stadium in Richmond, Kentucky. And uh, we mentioned, man, I've, I've gone to EKU late November or early November in this case, a lot of times, and it was 30 degrees and snowing, so I was really glad it was a nice oh, day. Beautiful <laughs> day, a um, great day for football. You know, we come out in the, first, the second half, we're down by 10. Defense hadn't had a stop yet. Um, here's a great play. There's Tevin Wells. Um, getting in there and, uh, and, and a big stop. That was our first stop of the ball game. Um, we, we get off the field. Um, they punt to us. And then, Darren, if we don't, um, Walter Powell bobbles the, 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 and we fumble it, fortunately for us, they, they have a... They um, did say he was interfered. Well, with. he yeah. did. So we retained possession there. Great field position. And this was disappointing. We're down 10, got our offense on the field. Um, we come out, we hit Dontel Watkins on a, for a first down on a, on a little hole shot over there. Um, you know, we're, things are going good. We got a chance to cut it to three. Here's a great throw, um, great run, um, I should say, by um, Jamal Barry, who, who continues to impress me each and every week um, with just yards after the catch. So, you know, we're driving, got a chance to cut the lead to three, and then all of a sudden things got a little bit sour on us here. Um, Casey was trying to throw it away. We fumble. EKU gets the ball at midfield. We're down 10. Was he trying to shovel that pass I think to somebody? he was trying to throw it, down, uh, throw it away, and the referee said he fumbled. Not a great decision, even though I thought Casey played one of his better games, um, no doubt about it. And, um, boy, they come out, and, uh, and from this point, um, I don't have a whole lot to say. There's Brandon Hathaway on the tackle. True freshman, Smyrna, Tennessee, who continues to play well. Um, we get outflanked here on the speed sweep. Very difficult play. Take a poor angle, and all of a sudden they're up 17, and, and the route's on at this point. But again, Dave, I don't think we quit. I just think, um, boy, they just really manhandled yeah, they, us up front, and there wasn't a whole lot we could do about it. Well, and this is a team that they lost at home to Eastern Illinois um, on homecoming and really didn't play all that well. But you got to say, this perhaps was the, the best game that EKU played the entire season. Oh, yeah. Well, they've been beat by them and Purdue, and, um, and I think Tennessee State beat them. Um, so those are their only three defeats. And we punted a couple of times. Um, you know, Stephen Mix is um, doing a fantastic job. He, he had um, two big kicks in the game that with no return. Same thing happened to him last week. Um, here they, you know, we, we pin them down deep. Um, we were playing man coverage on the tight end, and our, our outside linebacker um, blitzed instead of covering. That's two weeks in a row we've made that mistake. And, um, and here we, we call a great blitz. Um, we missed the quarterback. I think Quay Huzzy had him wrapped up, and we missed him. Pryor's very elusive, gets the first down. Um, you know, at this point of the game, Dave, man, we're ready. To, I'm kind of ready to go home at, at, at this juncture. And here... Um, our free safety gets sucked in and, and, and loses his key. And um, again, they, they get a big play. These plays shouldn't be on our the report. These are highlights yeah, for Eastern yeah, Kentucky. I, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, if, when you think about it too, you had a lot of time left in this game. But I, I want to I say this though, it, it got out of hand. You know, it was very evident at this point in the ball game, there wasn't going to be any comeback. But I mean, you look at Dwayne Brady here and you look at your guys blocking downfield and you just go, they're still playing. Yeah, yeah, we played and hard. Great run there hard. by Brady. Great run by Jamal Barry. Um, we got it first and goal at the five. We throw a screen pass out to the side. Don't get it. We run Brady up the middle for, for about a yard, and then we try the reverse. And, um, it's a fourth, fourth and yeah, goal play. Yeah, fourth and goal. And, you know, Walter, I don't know. 
He, he, just, cut it, he just could have cut it straight up. He would have had it. Yeah, or he could have stayed a little bit and ran to the outside. But uh, One of he, the two. He's such a great playmaker. <laughs> I, know, I know it. Um, so, you know, we don't get it in, and um, and then they end up eating a whole lot of clock off right here. Yeah, the, ne the next drive was uh, was 11, well, 11 plays, 98 yards. Yeah, and some of this on this drive, you know, we're, we got them pinned down there. You know, we're down 24 points. And, you know, we're taking some chances. We're blitzing some guys, leaving some guys uncovered. Um, I thought that Daryl Smith, he really tackled well, 38 on the, most of the night. Um, you know, we're just trying to do anything. And, 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 and here Pryor gets outside again. And we didn't play the bootleg well um, to, to, you know, for them to score again. But, you know, my point is, Dave, is to get back in the game. I mean, you know, what's the it's difference? It's almost of, like hockey where you had to take your goalie out. Yeah, you know, I mean, what's the difference getting beat by 14 or, or you know, 28, you right. know, as far as at, at that point? I mean, when, when you really it's going to be tough going. Um, but Walter's continuing to play hard, um, you know, and, and he had a, a, a great game. I mean, again, had eight catches. That's a six 100-yard game. Yeah, and, and here we actually had a – a, a, a sucker route call. We fake the screen, throw deep. We had two guys wide open. We give up pressure on the backside. And then at the end of the game, put KD Humphreys in. Um, here's to his, his old pal, Janowski Davis, who played a well of a game. Had a great special teams effort. And um, KD really threw it well. Great throw on the sideline here to Dontel Watkins. Um, I, I, was really, I think he was four or five on the evening. Good scramble here. Got to teach him to do a better job of slide. <laughs> that, that was one you scrape your knee up on. But, you and know, the, KD here, he's going to have a chance next year to be the guy. Well, I want to get him some reps. Yep. And, um, and there's to Pokey Harris, another freshman. Um, great play in there. Um, well, I told Coach Hood that after the game, you know, just whipped us. Um, and, and that was the bottom line. And there wasn't much we could do about it, unfortunately. Well, it was a tough defeat, 55-24 at Richmond. And we're going to get ready and transition now into the – Senior day on Saturday, it's always a, an emotional time for football players. They only get a chance to play so many games, and for a bunch of them, Saturday's going to be their last try. So we'll take a break, come back here with more with head coach Chris Hatcher on the Racer Report. Explore a new world. You guys have a lot of experience. Come and make yourself a good place. 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 Murray State University, your world to explore. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Here in the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher, we're going to transition now into the final home game Saturday as uh, Southeast Missouri State comes to town. One o'clock kick here at the stadium, and uh, you were a senior football player one time. What was it like you know, when you knew that was it? 
Well, I actually had that talk with the team before taping the show today. You know, we got 15 seniors that will suit up in the game um, on Saturday. And, and I told them, you know, you, they don't think about it right now. I mean, it, it may sound good last week of practice and all that. But I told them after the ball game, when they walk in the locker room and they take that helmet off, those shoulder pads off, they throw it in the bin, they get their shower, they walk out of the locker room, that's when it hits you. Because for those guys, this will be the last organized athletics event they play. I tell them intramurals don't count, church league <laughs> softball doesn't count. Um, and, and the season, you know, hasn't gone the way we wanted it to go. Um, of course, you want to win them all. You know, we played a tough schedule early. EIU, boy, we had them on the ropes, up 16, get beaten overtime, and lo and behold, they win the conference championship outright. Um, you know, get beat in a close game to Martin. You know, this that last game was really the one – we just got physically dominated. But right. all the other ones, we're right there in each and every game, but can't find a way to get over the hump. So didn't hasn't gone well, but, you know, goodness gracious, five and six is better than four and seven, and you got a chance to end your career at home with a big win over SEMO, and that's all you can ask for. Well, it's going to be a big game Saturday. It, it, it's the next game for the racers, and for the fans out there, uh, it's the last time you'll get to see the racers play this season. That's always kind of sad for me when it's all finally over, but we're going to kick it off at 1 o'clock at the stadium. I hope that you'll be here. We'll take another break, come back with more next on the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Murray State University, your world to explore. We're back here in the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher as the Racers play their final game of the season against Southeast Missouri State on Saturday. Uh, coach, I know as the games come, come and go, you probably can't spend a lot of time looking back to last week or two weeks ago, but you know we were thinking about the other day, uh, just a couple of plays at Eastern Illinois, a couple of plays against UT Martin, a couple of plays at Jacksonville State in this conference season might have been a lot different. Well, I, I agree with you on that, and you know that's hindsight 2020, and you know, we, we gave it our best shot each and every week. It didn't always work out the way we wanted it to. Um, we had some good performances and not so good performances. But again, I, you know, I remind all the people watching, we talk about it all the time. You know, we're building a program. I mean, golly, they hadn't won a whole bunch of games, um, you know, prior to my arrival here. Of course, would we want to be further along now? Sure, we want to win them all. I mean, that's right. what you, you want that's to do. But, but we, we're, we're building, and we had a lot of freshmen play the other night that played well. Um, but we got to find a way to win those close ones, uh, and we're not doing that. And that's my job as the coach to reevaluate some things that we're doing and get our team prepared to play. But we got one more game. We need a big crowd at the ball game. This team's been playing hard. They've represented well. They've been a classy bunch. It sure would not be nice to send them off with a win with a big crowd at home. It would be great, and also it would be great to have Racer One run around a bunch of times Saturday. Southeast Missouri State's coming to town, and we're going to kick it off at one o'clock 
here at Stewart Stadium. Our last break here on the Racer Report. We'll come back and wrap it up next with head coach Chris Hatcher. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Hey Racer fans, don't forget to check out GoRacers.com. It is the homepage for every Racer fan. you got videos and stats and bios on every athlete at Murray State. You can check it all out. It should be your homepage, GoRacers.com. Here to wrap it up with head coach Chris Hatcher on the Racer Report as the Racers are coming off a 55-24 defeat at Eastern Kentucky and they're going to play their last home game against Southeast Missouri State Saturday uh, at 1 o'clock. And what are you going to say to the seniors maybe Friday at the last day of practice? Is there anything special that the, that the team does, anything like that? No, we really don't. I mean, they know it's the last yeah. day. And, 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 you know, it's, again, we're relying on those guys to play well as well as those young guys. Um, you know, the big thing is just to enjoy the moment, enjoy the opportunity. You know, there, there is some finality to it. I think this has been a good group. You know, our record may not show it, but, you know, we played a tougher schedule. We played Central Arkansas as opposed to Georgia State. EIU is a whole lot better than they were, you know, a, a year ago. Or, you know, we could be sitting here with a 7-4 and four team. Um, so, you know, I, I think we're still climbing, and this class has been, um, been very helpful and getting this program, um, you know, at least from the bottom to the middle class of the conference. But again, we need a big crowd, Dave. Um, it's the last game people can come watch this season. Um, you know, you got hometown legend Casey Brotman suiting up for the last time, and boy, he sure has meant a lot to this program, as well as all the other players. But it's a little more special when you think of a a hometown guy out there playing his last game at Roy Stewart State. Well, you know, we were talking on, on the broadcast Saturday. What, what a remarkable story. It comes here as a walk-on, and, and really his freshman year consisted of four games, I think, at the end of the season. That's just amazing. He's got a chance to get to 10,000 passing yards Saturday. Yeah, well, I hope he does. Aren't a lot he, of guys that can say that in their college No, first. I hope he does, and um, I wish he hadn't have played those first that first yep. year before I got here. We'd have one more season with him, but, but we got a good group. We need a win. Um, it sure would make the offseason a lot sweeter, Dave. Certainly would. Coach, good luck Saturday. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay, head coach Chris Hatcher, we'll see you next time on the Racer Report. Casey Brockman has it. The Colonels bring the heat. They had a hold of him. He throws, caught it to 15, 10, 5, and Powell takes it into the end zone for the touchdown, and he ties Harvey Tanner's record of 88 catches in the season. The Racers are up 23 to 20.